Um, yes, uh, one of my earliest memories as a five-year-old child uh, was of rescuing ants that some of my playmates had trodden upon. Uh, and uh, yes, I was extremely uh, upset about this. Why do people want to tread on ants? Uh, and I also used to suffer deep moral dilemmas when I saw a blackbird uh, 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 eat or uh, seize a worm. What did I do? Uh, I didn't like the thought of worms suffering, but equally a blackbird had to eat. Uh, what was the solution? Uh, there didn't seem to be any way uh, to avoid the, the food chain. Should I clap my hands? In which case the blackbird would starve. Um, now, what's the relevance uh, of this? Um, yes, I'm going to outline why I think it both likely and desirable uh, that we are going to abolish suffering throughout the living world, and that uh, descendants are going to be animated by uh, genetically pre-programmed gradients of well-being that are orders of magnitude richer than anything accessible today. Um, but I'm not just going to focus on humans and post-humans, I'm also going to focus on non-human animals, uh, and compared to our descendants, we are in a sense akin to the little ants. And I think a lot of uh, researchers in artificial intelligence, particularly uh, singularitarians, are worried about uh, uh, friendly AI uh, and our, 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 our sort of super intelligent uh, descendants tend to be worried about the equivalent of ants. Um, now, I personally think uh, that because they're super intelligent, they will also be uh, super empathetic. They will have uh, powers of empathetic understanding and perspective taking that uh, dwarf our own. But this is clearly quite controversial. Um, anyway, um, let's see where we can start. Okay, first of all, I'm just going to outline uh, the challenge in a sense. Um, for starting with physical pain, uh, consider the plight of people today who are born with congenital anaesthesia. Uh, they, in many cases, die prematurely. They have all sorts of physical, physical problems. Uh, so, is it really possible, you might ask, to get rid of uh, physical pain? Uh, then there are the different forms of emotional pain. Uh, there is the question of the hedonic treadmill. Um, now, a lot of the speakers today have talked and will be talking about the wonderful new forms of technology and prospect, um, but it seems as though each of us tends to have a so-called hedonic set point, which over the course of a lifetime uh, more or less determines our average le level of happiness or unhappiness. Now, some people, they're relatively fortunate, their hedonic set point is set, is set quite high. Uh, others, much less fortunate, they tend to be uh, depressive and angst-ridden. Uh, and it seems as though however much one improves the environment, it doesn't in the long run make a great deal of difference to changing the hedonic set point. And this is illustrated by a number of studies, for instance, uh, six months after winning, let's say, the lottery or having a catastrophic accident, most people revert to the level of happiness or unhappiness that they normally experience before the accident or the good fortune. Um, so this is a, a, a formidable challenge. Um, it might seem obvious that today with our technological civilization that we're happier and better off than, let's say, hunter-gatherers hunter on the African savanna or Kalahari bushmen, but in practice, if you look, for instance, at uh, suicide statistics, for instance, about a, a million people in the year take their well, a million people in the world each year take their own lives. The incidence of depression and anxiety disorders. It's by no means clear that we're subjectively uh, better off uh, than we were as hunter gatherers. Um, looking to the uh, the, the animal kingdom it might seem, uh, for instance, uh, impossible to take domestic cats, they're obligate carnivores. How on earth is one going to tackle the suffering they cause to, to, to rodents and birds, um, take uh, meat eating, uh, whatever the arguments for or against uh, the 
exploitation of non-humans. Most people will shrug their shoulders and say, but I like the taste of meat, so how on earth is one going to uh, prevent the appalling uh, suffering that ex exists in the meat industry? And finally, even if one were to do that, uh, how on earth is one to get rid of uh, wild animal suffering, nature led in tooth and claw? Um, now, practice, I am going to argue that in the, in the next few centuries we are going to abolish all forms of suffering. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of uh, technical details uh, in this talk because I hope people are going to be asking uh, questions near the end, but anyone who's interested, uh, uh, um, there are abundant resources uh, online. Uh, many, many years ago, back in 1995, I wrote a Tract Manifesto the Hedonistic Imperative on headweb.com, which in spite of its rather debauched sounding uh, name is in fact a plea for the use of biotechnology to abolish all forms of suffering. And more recently, in a little more scholarly vein, if you want to go to abolitionist.com, uh, you will see some more resources. But anyway, um, what I'm now going to do now is just very briefly go over um, some of the core ideas and then I hope you're going to either ask questions or make suggestions. Um, okay, why does suffering exist at all? Uh, the honest answer is that no one has any idea. This is the hard problem of consciousness within the context of materialist science. It's not clear why, for instance, silicon, uh, our silicon robots, for instance, can respond to noxious stimuli and behave quite intelligently but don't have any uh, raw fields, or we presume they don't. Um, they wouldn't have any raw fields even if you were to program them with sort of saying, ouch, please don't hurt me if you spilled sulfuric acid on them. So the deep uh, answer is that we, we, we just don't know. But in a more shallow context, evolutionary biology tells us why uh, the different forms of suffering exist. And all the core emotions, sadly, only one uh, uh, happiness is, is positive. The others, uh, sadness, fear, disgust, and so forth, are, are all negative. Um, why does, for instance, uh, anxiety and anxiety disorders exist? Uh, essentially, on the African savanna, you can see that uh, a mother, for instance, who was constantly anxious and worrying about her, uh, her, her offspring was more likely to leave more copies of her genes, maximise her inclusive fitness in the jargon, uh, than a happy, relaxed mother who was sure that all was well with the world. Um, even something like uh, depression and depressive disorder, which is uh, horrible and quite uh, 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 endemic, now that might seem uh, to be uh, maladaptive, but evolutionary biologists uh, tell us that uh, depression can actually be extremely adaptive in certain circumstances. Uh, the current thinking is that it's an adaptation to uh, group living, uh, that in a predator-rich environment, naked, naked apes, for instance, were extremely vulnerable, and it could be advantageous for the individual to live uh, in, in a group, but within a group there is a pecking order, and it seems that, or it is argued, that depression is the kind of uh, internalised correlate of the losing uh, subroutine, uh, and that it's a way of keeping people, most people, uh, subordinate. So it's extremely risky if you're uh, a delta, hormonally delta minus male uh, to uh, challenge the dominant alpha, uh, and therefore uh, keeping your head down, this is in the ancestral environment, could be extremely advantageous. I'm simplifying a lot. Um, but anyway, so. The reason today that these nasty uh, states of consciousness uh, exist seems to be that many of them were adaptive in the ancestral uh, environment. Uh, but I think we're going to be able to change this. Okay, why get rid of suffering? Well, I'm not going to, even though I'm a philosopher, I'm not going to philosophize at you. I happen to be uh, a utilitarian, but uh, uh, Humanity Plus and the World and the uh, the Transhumanist Declaration it has a commitment to the well-being of all, all sentience. Now, this is at once extremely uh, non-specific, but also extremely sp uh, specific. It's non-specific in that it doesn't commit uh, us to maximising uh, happiness, it doesn't commit one to utilitarianism, or Kantianism, or virtue ethics, or whatever your ethics 
scientific ethics happen to be 